Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, my coworker was fired after my report. The second story, the boss only realized how important the employees were when almost all of them quit. The third story, play a-hole games, win a-hole prizes. The first story is a fight, a 13-page report, and a fired coworker. I was working at a city-owned community center, which was being rented for a social gathering of the Turkish and Romanian variety. Alcohol was being served, so as per building rules, guards had to be hired by the organizers. One building staff member was also present. No children were allowed in the main hall. 10 to 15 children were brought, and were basically confined to a small hallway, with no babysitter. I was posted at the front door giving out smoke tickets so people could get back in. We locked the doors fairly early. The other guard, we'll call him Mark, was at the doors to the main hall. We were dropped off by the owner of our company, who was buddies with the organizer. Owner gave very explicit instructions to Mark that he cannot leave his post to have a smoke, without letting me know, and must smoke out front so I can get him if SH happens. About halfway through the four shifts of surviving rampaging children, a muscular man in an orange shirt attempted to leave with two beers. Where the F was Mark and why did this man even get to me? I told him he couldn't leave with the beers, and he threw them on the ground and started yelling at me. I told him to calm down or he'd be thrown out, and then the organizer got involved. Oh sorry, he's my friend. Blah blah, I'll take responsibility, blah blah. The problem of course is that the organizer is friends with the D owner, so I let the man back in. Just remember him as orange shirt. Just after midnight in the final hour, I'm using the smoke tickets to play the quiet game with the children. Whomever stays quiet the longest each round gets one. Maintained my sanity for a bit. Then I hear some yelling, look down the hall and see two men running towards me waving their hands around and shouting in some language. Once again, where the F is Mark? I follow them into the main hall and find orange shirt being held up against a wall by about a dozen people, ranging from just holding him to shaking their finger in his face to grabbing his effing jaw and screaming at him. I move in, get a hand on his shoulder to get his attention and do my job. You need to leave now. His jaw is then grabbed by some woman. I start peeling people away from the group that are of the finger wagging and jaw grabbing variety, leaving four men holding him. I tell them all he needs to be moved toward the exits. And we start corralling him. The building staff are present and tell him he needs to leave doing her job. Orange shirt rips off his shirt Hogan style and throws it on the ground, picks it up and eventually slams his way out the front doors, with the four men following him outside. At some point Mark showed up and was following me around. I couldn't pinpoint when he showed up in my report, but I know that when I noticed him I dismissed him as completely effing useless and just handled it myself. Once we were outside I turned to him and asked the question, where the F were you? Having a smoke? Where? Out back with the organizer. Then I hear a crash, look inside and see a man with head wound that just pushed someone into the vending machine. FFS. I tell Mark to stay at the door and to not let orange shirt back in and go inside. I paused in the lobby, assessed everything, then said F it and called the police. I now have two violent men and I can't deal with them both at the same time. I got my directions wrong to dispatch, but I did some hand talking with the building staff and they confirmed they were already talking to police. Great. I let the dispatcher know someone else is talking to them and hang up. I get the guy with a head wound to sit down inside and calm him down. Building staff ask him to leave and I tell her no, he isn't going outside, because orange shirt and this guy likely fought. Some woman casually walks up to the man and dumps a bottle of water over his head and begins finger wagging and shouting. The man tries to stand and I gently hold him back, telling the woman to get out. People arrive and I call my supervisor and tell him to get down here now. I step outside the front doors to find building staff locked in a conversation with another woman. The woman was the girlfriend of Orange Shirt and was trying to apologize for him and tell building staff he wasn't coming back. Building staff was trapped in her training and kept repeating you need to leave oblivious to the fact that the woman was telling her that they were leaving. I had to step between the two of them before that got out of hand, as the woman was getting very aggravated with staff. My supervisor shows up, as do city security since it's their building. Give my statement to city security, and I tell my supervisor about the lack of presence from Mark, along with the full events. Supervisor instructs us both to have a full occurrence report to him by the end of the day Monday. I finished mine before I went to sleep. Mark never wrote one and was terminated on Tuesday. Oh, the cause of the fight? Police didn't do a D thing except book orange shirt and the guy with the head wound. No questions to anyone. I walked in and asked one of the cleanup guys WTF happened. 
You know how you reach around someone and tap them on the shoulder and make them look away from you? Well, same thing here, except instead of a tap it was a full slap to the side of the head of Orange Shirt by someone walking by. Orange Shirt turned and slugged the guy sitting beside him, and the culprit booked it out an emergency exit. The second story is, I wasn't willing to cut another vacation short for Family Dollar. This made me not part of the Backbone team anymore, so I decided to show them just how important I was. For three years I worked at Family Dollar. It was easily the worst job I've ever had in my life, but I had my reasons for staying there. During my time there I was pretty much always on call. My store manager expected you to be at the store at the drop of a hat if she needed you. If you weren't able to comply, she would throw tantrums and cut your hours. I quickly learned that it was just easier to go with the flow, so that's what I did. There were many, many times when I would be called into work early because the store manager was sick. In all actuality, she was just hung over. One day I got a text from her about just such a thing. Thursday, September 23rd, 5.25 a.m. She, hopefully this doesn't wake you. I've been sick most of the night. I'm gonna try to make it in by 9, but if not, I'll be in at some point, sick or not. I wanna get that truck put away. You may need to push those food U-boats back into the back before open. I'm sorry. D stomach? Ugh. Thursday, September 23rd, 6.26 a.m. Me. I hope you feel better. See you later today. Monday, October 4th, 4.41 p.m. She. I hate to bother you on your vacation, but can you work on Sunday 10? Kelsey, I guess, quit today. Had to find out through her mom and I'm struggling a little. Me. Sorry, I'm going to the Ren Fest today. What happened exactly? As you can see, I was frequently her go-to person to cover a shift when a cashier called off or quit. I usually went in when she asked because it was easier than fighting with her. But this time I said no, and she didn't respond to my non-compliance very well. Monday, October 4th, 6.30 p.m. She. So, some might have heard Kelsey has decided to abandon us. Found out through her mom. I'm waiting for Kim's background to come back and hopefully get her started this week. Next week's schedule will be changing and I'll be working on it the next couple days, and get it out as soon as possible. Thanks to my Backbone crew and Diana for helping me keep my sanity today. It's been hard. You can do it. Suddenly my unwillingness to come in this one time meant that I was no longer a part of her Backbone crew. Me, her best assistant manager who never complained about his shifts. I decided right then and there that it was finally time for me to part ways with Family Dollar. It took me less than a week to find a new job. I couldn't believe it because my self-worth was very low by that point. This new job was in an office, 8 through 5, Monday through Friday, with a 50% raise from what I was already making. When I handed my boss my resignation letter, she told me I was ruining her life because I was quitting on Halloween weekend, and now she wouldn't be able to party. I just reminded her that I didn't have to give a two weeks notice, and could easily quit right at that moment and she relented. Things started falling apart after I quit. They all figured out just how much I did at that place, and how I kept the peace. I was the only assistant manager who didn't mind working evenings or weekends. After I left the assistant managers, AM started fighting with one another. AM. Diana, I don't care anymore, you're being a B. Amanda, fire me if you want to. I don't give an F anymore. I'm tired of people thinking they can run all over me. I get one day shift a week too, Diana. And I also have been working weekends, which is the only time I have to spend with JD, because we can't get him during the week, so I have no time at all to spend with him. Because neither one wanted to work weekends or evenings, trucks weren't getting worked, and the store started looking like a disaster area. In short, the store manager figured out I really was her background crew. This revenge was sweet enough, but I had one final act. I asked one of the other assistant managers to apply to my workplace to the orders department. I knew the schedule would entice her, but what I think really did it for her was the pay. Sure enough, she got the job, and when that happened, the other assistant manager immediately put in her notice too. The only people left were the store manager and a cashier. This story is a happy ending for all involved though. The store manager realized that it was time for her to have a new job too, and she ended up quitting as well. I guess the moral of the story is to know your worth, and the worth of your staff, and don't work for Family Dollar because they absolutely couldn't care less about their workers. And the last story is... Car rental but still a front desk DNR Smackdown. Many years ago, late 1990s, I worked in a reservation call center for one of the big rental companies, and our office was in the back of the building near our local airport, large West Coast City, USA. Because we're in the same building as our busiest rental counter location, we get all the good peeved off custy stories as they happened. Background info. The world headquarters of a large multinational company had an excellent local corporate rate set up with us, because they had a lot of folks coming into town to meet at the mothership, corporate HQ, including an F-ton of people coming in to interview, both new to be hired, lateral promotions and the like. The client company had an in-house travel service, and we gave them their own dedicated line to call in reservations on. We had a great relationship with them, and because we talked so often an agent could easily book 5-10 to 10 reservations in under 10 minutes, 
which was great for our talk times and commissions. The head honcho of the client's company travel team was a serious go-getter, and all-around cool guy who watched out for his people under him, and us. We'll call him Tim. His physical office was less than a mile from mine, and Tim and my department head often had lunch together. Their monthly rental tab ran to 40k plus USD per month, so they got really special rates, got bumped up whenever possible, and basically treated like they were made of gold, and everyone was always super cool. They knew they had it good and were chill. One day my favorite front desk manager came back to talk story. He was a Samoan guy that grew up in Hawaii, about the latest a-hole customer. Apparently this dude that came in was an employee of our favorite client company and had been booked for a Lincoln Town Car. Big plush comfortable ride, and the nicest thing in the fleet at the time. He had been told what he was getting, but insisted that he was booked for a Porsche, which my company didn't even have in our market. Seattle, Los Angeles and the Bay Area only. This set this lovely customer off. My Hawaiian buddy said that he was missing the bright red mustache and cowboy hat, but was otherwise a perfect doppelganger of Yosemite Sam. Well, Yosemite Sam decided to have a full-on meltdown in the lobby, with the usual shouts of don't you know who I am and other things we all love to hear, and eventually making the incredibly nice Latina counteragent cry and find my buddy for backup. After hearing her side of the story, Hawaiian buddy, HB, went out to deal with YS, and it went like this. HB, my counteragent tells me you're not happy. How can I help? YS, you can fire the little disrespectful B. HB, excuse me, what? YS, I was promised a Porsche. That little W says you don't have one for me. HB, that's right, we don't have Porsches for anyone, since we don't carry them into this market. Checks res info. Let's see what you were booked for. Looks like you were booked a Lincoln Town Car and it was booked for you by Tim, at your company's travel department. YS, well that dumb F must have effed up my rental. I demand you get me a Porsche or else I'm never renting from your company again. Hawaiian buddy said that at this point he was completely done with this guy, and it was time to drop the hammer. HB, you'll never rent from us again? I can help you with that. Types on keyboard. Congratulations, you're now on Big Car Rentals Global Do Not Rent List. You won't be able to rent one of our cars anywhere on the planet. Oh, and by the way, due to the corporate rate your company has set up with us, you being added to the DNR list automatically sends reports to client company's HR office in the local travel office. Have a great day, D. Hawaiian buddy said that Yosemite Sam gaped at him like a goldfish for a few moments and then went outside to grab a cab with his shoulders slumped. Our supervisor had lunch with Tim a few days later, mostly to find out what happened. Dude came into town to get interviewed for a big corporate promotion with lots of zeros on his paycheck, relocation to my fair city, company car, huge housing allotment the works. All taken off the table, offer rescinded, extensive notes added to his HR folder and apparently got reviewed and then fired. I guess he had peeved off some other counter agents at a few hotels and car rentals on the company's time before. Subscribe, hit the like button, and have a good day.